Good morning, everybody. I'm Pastor Kennan, and welcome to Casual Worship. We are so excited to have you with us. No matter where you're joining us from, we have a great message of good news for you today. We are in a fairly new series that we've been talking about uh, prayer, and we've been talking about the Lord's Prayer specifically. And so what I want to tell you about this Your Kingdom Come series is that uh, it it makes an implication, right, when you say Your Kingdom Come, uh, based on the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples uh, to to, uh, say, the kingdom of God, which is promised to all those who believe in Christ for all eternity, can be partially realized right here right now. We don't have to wait until we fly away, as that song says. We don't have to wait. It actually can come right now. And so I just want to open our conversation with a question for you at home and for those of you who are here on the set, and that is, in what ways have you seen heaven meet earth now? I'm going to start with you, Chase. Me? Yeah. In what ways have I specifically, like specific instances? Yeah. Um... Just like the different ways that people help each other, you know, like we got the the red stick together thing. I think that's a perfect example or any just like random acts of kindness you see, like, I don't know, somebody helping a homeless dude out, like, or whatever. You know, like, stuff like that. Those are great examples. For those of you who don't know, Red Stick Together is a meal program that our church sponsors at the Broadmoor Plaza Shopping Center on Florida Boulevard, where we feed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. Uh, and so what's great about it is that uh, we're well over 40,000 <clears> meals uh, in since the pandemic began. And so that is definitely an example of that. How about you, Amber? What, what How have you experienced heaven on earth? Uh Chase kind of stole mine, but okay. I think I think the people like I, the community, especially here at Broadmoor, like how they love you and how mm-hmm. they show love and how they show love when no one's looking. Yeah. And because y'all know me, I love my people. I like to love on everybody, but to get that in return and just like forgiveness and just like I don't even have to ask for it. Mm-hmm. I just I just really feel so loved, and I hope other people do because to me, that's God. That's heaven. Yeah. Like, you're not, family or not, they're here and they love you and they welcome you. And I mean, that's just like a perfect example to me. And then they help you and they help others. And yeah, look, I could not agree with you more. I mean, the people here are just absolutely incredible. You're incredible. And so uh, I, for me, it's, it's uh, seen in creation. I'm a very visual person. And so when I look out over a forest or mountains or a lake or, or, uh, you know, just anything beautiful in creation, a waterfall, uh, I just can't help but think that is heaven. That is just heaven. God has made such a beautiful a place for us to live in, and it's so important that we take care of it and and love it back um, because it's just it's just a beautiful planet, and uh, I'm really excited. So, I um, we had a chance to uh, uh, have a very special person who is on set with us every week, uh, and that's Mr. Eric Peters. Uh, we've had an opportunity to uh, get to know him a little bit more, and he's going to answer this question. Question uh, from his own point of view. Take a look at this. Heaven touching earth is something that I, I wish uh, more of us could experience more often. Um, but for me, it was a very specific scenario where. I was in a treatment center um, trying to get through my, my drug and alcohol program and, and addiction and uh, I had a lot of questions going through my mind whether I was in the right place, whether this was the right time, um, if I was doing this alone or not and it was um, one very late night I woke up from a sleep and <clears throat> I heard, I specifically heard the voice of, of uh, a deceased family member. Um, it was a, um, an uncle who I was very close with who um, had Down syndrome and he uh, played the guitar. He's one of the reasons that I actually play the guitar today. We had a very close relationship and, um, you know, I, I heard his voice telling me that, that I was in the right place and that everything was going to be okay. And then through that experience, I also felt a huge 
warmth and embrace and support from other deceased family members, uh, grandmothers, grandfathers, that sort of thing. So um, if that's not heaven touching earth, I don't know what is. Wow, you just heard an incredible testimony from Eric about how heaven actually can touch earth. And, um, and that's just beautiful. You know, they really can touch each other. And so there is, um, uh, you know, another way that we can think about this. And that's really kind of what this series is about. And that's using the Lord's Prayer to kind of help us uh, 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 with that. And so Amber's going to read uh, scripture for us out of Matthew chapter 6. What verse are you starting in? Five. Five if you're following along. And so uh, take a listen as we unpack what God is, has for us today. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may, they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then in this way, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be their, your name. So last week we talked about Father, and we talked about that specifically because Father is necessary in terms to understand the relationship between God and the other Godhead, Jesus Christ. And, and so we talked about how there is an ideal relationship in this Father with, with the Father's children. That's us. And so this, for many of you, uh, Father he may not evoke good things, but that's not what this is. This is an ideal Father, a loving, caring Father, nurturing parent. And so that's who we're kind of looking, because those are God's attributes. Um, anything else is not God. And so uh, this week, though, we're really going to focus in on hallowed be thy name. This is referring to the holiness of God. This is referring to the highness of God our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, okay? And so the more love you have, right? The more, uh, the more holiness or power you have, the more you are like Christ, the more God you have. <laughs> and so the more God-likeness you have, and that's really, that really means the more heaven you have. And that's how this kind of stuff happens. But when you're evoking God's name, when you're calling out God's name, you're beginning to build a relationship, uh, you see? And so even if it's just the first time, you're, you're, it's just kind of like meeting God, right? In that first moment, that moment of, you know, I'm just gonna believe that there's something greater than me, something that someone that can, that, that made all of this stuff, that, 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 that knows me and that knows us and that knows things that I don't know. And so that's who the Father is. And so I just think that building that relationship is so important. And the more prayer, the greater the relationship. And that's why we're gonna spend the summer talking about it. Uh, we want to have a strong relationship with God. We wanna have a strong relationship with each other. And so to have a conversation about prayer, we must have a conversation about praise. We have to. Uh, because it's, you know, our physical lives, our spiritual lives, our prayer lives, they must all be about adoration for God. They must all stem out of that. Jesus was teaching his followers to pray. And the first thing he warned was what you read. Don't be like the hypocrites. And these folks, they were praying one thing in public, but then they were doing other things in secret, right? So their hearts were different than what they were actually praying in public. And so a good question to be asking yourself, and I'm not making anybody answer this out loud, but a good question to be asking yourself right now is what do I do in secret? What do I do when no one is looking? Because I think a lot of times we fool ourselves into believing that we can hide that from God, but that's not who God is, see? 
Scott sees everything. I know my, my uh, parents use those little baby monitors so they can see everything. It's kind of like we have a big cosmic baby monitor on us, right? Uh, another good question though is, what do you pray for in secret? What do you pray for in secret? And the reason why it's important that we know that and that we recognize it and that we understand it is because typically those are the things that are controlling you. There are the things that are controlling you. They often are the things that make you feel like you're failing in some way or that you've fallen short or you don't have enough, right? And at the end of the days, all of our failures, everything that we have in our life that we attribute to failure really that is, a, that is related directly to our adoration. Because we're either denying our sinfulness or we are wrongly believing that God's not giving us everything we need. I mean, it really is, it really is important, this whole adoration piece. So here's what I want you to answer uh, with each other if you're with someone in the room. We're gonna answer it together here right now. What have you been calling out to God for lately? What have you been calling out to God for lately? What about you, Eric? What have you been calling out to God for? Um, well, I had, a, um, recently I had a friend that, that fell, fell ill. So I um, was definitely sending out some, some prayers for him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Personally, it's it's been more of of um, kind of I guess praying for other people's journeys. You know, okay. like I have kind of that you know that that path in in my ministry in my life, whatever you want to call it. Um, that you know where it's I'm always in 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 some sort of a loop or a circle about what's going on with others you know back yeah. in texas or even here at home other people's families that that, that come into contact with me so yeah. it's a lot of that you know just kind of like just just asking god to be <clears throat> to be with those people and to kind of help them you know help them start to see things hopefully in a, in a, mm -hmm. in a better light that's great yeah thank you for that what have you been calling out for chase Oh, a bunch of different stuff. Like, I have a friend whose brother was in, like, a severe car accident. He should have died in. So I've been praying about his healing. And uh, another friend I have lost her job. Mm -hmm. I've been praying about that. Mm -hmm. uh, direction in my own life. Mm -hmm. Healing in my own life, you know. Uh, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. You know. Thank you for that honesty. How about you, Amber? What have you been calling out to God for lately? Yeah, I'm kind of the same. I have a lot of friends who are all different paths and different things, and they all need a lot of prayer and guidance. And it's not mm -hmm. all bad stuff, but for them and selfishly for me, and I know you could relate, um, looking to get a house. Yes. So I'm like, is this the right thing? Is this the one? Is that right. okay? Um, so I've definitely been a little selfish in my prayers, but honestly just am I in the right spot? Like, am I doing the things I'm supposed to? I've really, and I honestly think it's this sermon series too. I've been like, okay, like, let's talk. Is this really supposed to happen? Are we sure? Like, yeah. Because I like to control yeah. all the things. I understand. <laughs> I understand. I'm a little bit of a control freak too. So I get it. And, you know, I also agree, like those prayers for direction. Yeah. You know, I've prayed so many of those, but I've also been praying for my family. You know, we've gone through a bunch of stuff this past year and it just keeps going on and on. It seems like one thing after another. And so just been praying for them. And, you know, that can be, um, that can be hard on all of us, but it can be very hard on children. And so just, you know, going through the things that our families have gone through, um, a lot of my prayers have been on their behalf, like some of you have mentioned about praying for others. And so as we begin to understand though, what is on our heart to talk to God about, uh, we start uh, uh, really kind of taking inventory of what's going on in our lives. That's what it is when we start praying for that stuff. We're kind of taking inventory and we're also taking inventory of kind of our morality in regards to that. And so I want you to listen as Eric continues his testimony uh, about um, his own personal reflections. And uh, I think what he has to say may help you with yours.
Experiencing the kingdom of God on earth is something I try to keep my eyes and ears open to as much as I can. And I feel like here at Broadmoor in the music ministry, it's something that I am blessed to be able to be a part of um, every week and multiple times a week now with the online worship. Calling out God's name had been something that I had not been very accustomed to for a very long time. Uh, my relationship with him had dwindled and, and with any sort of church environment as well. Um, I've alluded to my experience through the online worship and, and through the people that have met me through the church about my experiences uh, through drug and alcohol addiction and more importantly the way that God has, has brought me through that and to be able to be a part of all of your lives today, uh, which I'm so gr truly grateful for. But um, there was a time coming on two and a half years ago where um, I had I had truly run out of solutions for myself. I had I had run out of time. I'd run out of money, and I'd just run out of hope. And um, I was taught by the men that came before me in the program to to truly call out for God's help. And so it was the first time that I had spoken God's name aloud in a while, and it, in a while, and it was just simply God help. And through that, that simple beginning uh, continued to build my relationship with God and with Jesus Christ and I'm so grateful for that and to be able to be with you all today here in the church. I can think of the biggest time that I was surprised with God's mercy and love which was once again I'm going to go through my my um, my steps in, in the program of Alcoholics Anonymous and um, after the fourth step which is the biggest step of them all um, they refer, it's, it's really the, the personal house cleaning, if you will, you know, where um, everything that you've ever been through in your life uh, is listed out on paper and then shared with another person, with your sponsor or whoever it may be. And um, it's a big personal house cleaning, you know, sort of like a, an ultimate confession. If you are actually able to make it to that point, you really hope that, you're get, that you get a lot of the the ease and comfort that uh, is promised through that experience. And um, I can definitely attest to that after working it honestly and deliberately and wholeheartedly coming out of that experience and even listing some of my deepest, darkest secrets and actions and thoughts and, and desires um, to still feel God's love and mercy on the other side is um, what helped me what helped bring me through and, and allowed me to build on confidence into what I have today and if there's anyone in our church family or anyone you know um, that uh, you need someone to talk to about issues with with drug and alcohol addiction please feel free to find any way you need to contact me whether it's social media or seeing me on the church campus after a service. Um, my ears and my heart are always open for this sort of thing. It's, it's another part of my mission that I'd like to bring to the church and um, really just to, to this earth. So please, I'm here for you. Let me know if there's anything I can do. Thanks, y'all. What an amazing story. And what a sincere offer um, that Eric has made to help anyone who is experienced addiction. And I hope if that's you, that you'll pray about uh, talking with Eric um, because he is a fantastic witness. Eric, thank you for your testimony. Uh, the first thing in prayer that Jesus said we should do, the first thing he says is, hallow God's name. Hallowed God's name. Hallowed is a weird word because it's not a word that really translates well <laughs> into English from the Greek. And so essentially it means to make something numero uno, number one. It means to make it the most important, the most crucial thing, the, the most ultimate thing. And so before you get into uh, petitions like give us your daily bread and what you need to have, you know, uh, your careers, your relationships, your, your money, uh, things that are causing you anxiety and that you need relief from. And before you get into those confessions and pardons that, that Eric was talking about uh, that, that comes from taking an inventory and reflecting deeply upon yourself and, and the impact you've had here, the grudges, the wrongdoings, the, the shortcomings, and, and those things that cause you to have a low self-image, Jesus said, adoration and praise for God. 
adoration and praise for God. Get all your problems, get all your needs, get all your personal inventory, and then frame it in the peace of Christ. That is what adoration does. It frames everything. And that is why Christ teaches here to the disciples, hallowed be your name. Because when we began to adore God, when we begin to praise God and we, we begin to realize how great God is, all of those problems, all of those needs, they don't seem as big. All of a sudden, you're proclaiming something really important. And as you, as you, as you grow in certainty through the assurance that God's word gives us here, we start believing, you know what? We're gonna have everything that we need. And what is most important comes to focus. When we hallow the name of God, we put it before all that stuff. We put it before all of those needs, before all of those ways that, that we feel like we failed. We put it before all of those relationships and those people and whether we did the right thing. We put God first. For many of you, you have experienced an unprecedented year. Uh, it's been difficult. For my own family, it's also been difficult. I've shared uh, many uh, times with the congregation and with you all here online that my office got burned down. I'm starting to feel like a, a sad country song. My office burned down, you know, my, my father died. Uh, this past, a few weeks ago, our house flooded in the rain and our home was taken from us. And so it begins to start feeling super overwhelming when you think about all of the things that have happened. You know, I lost my congregation <laughs> when, when the coronavirus happened. And so it just felt like so much loss and so much grief. And, and it just felt like it kept coming one thing after the other after the other. And so when uh, uh, Rachel and I were sitting with the kids at dinner the other night, Caleb, my son, who's only nine years old, he started thinking about the things he lost. He lost his docking station to his Nintendo Switch, and he lost several of his toys, everything in his closet uh, to the flood. And so my wife reached over and patted his hand and she looked at him and she, she quoted right out of Matthew 6, which is where we're reading this Lord's Prayer. It's right after. It says, you know, if God will take care of the sparrows, how much more will God take care of you? How much more will God take care of you? And so here is what I want us to all think about and what I want us to all do. I want us to hallow God's name. I want us to demote those things in our life that we think we need that are so big. I want us to demote all of those fears that we have of things that we believe are, are going to be scarce, too scarce in our life. I want us to demote all of those things that, that cause us anxiety and grief. And let your praise for God start bringing healing and inviting that in into the natural world. Let heaven be here and now. And let the most important thing, the fact that God is able, let your God be bigger than all of that. Put it in the right perspective by hallowing God's name. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen.